from the Cheap Seat Sports Bar and Grill in Champaign, Illinois, Ford of Tuscola proudly presents to you the Behind the Mic Show featuring sports, comedy, and entertainment. Now here's your hosts, Keith Gibson and Sam Irwin. Welcome everybody to the Behind the Mic Show from the Cheap Seat Sports Bar Grill. Keith Gibson alongside me, my tag team partner each and every week, Sam Irwin, as we bring you another episode. And a big one tonight, big one. If you're hog wild and you like pigs, it's going to be a big episode for you. Or if you like, never mind, I'm not even going to go over about John Yates. But anyway, um, <laughs> Sam Irwin. Yes, sir. Uh, another great week. Not a, not mm-hmm. a whole lot going on around the world. NBA's back. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh We'll talk about some upcoming guests we have coming up, too, which is exciting for you and I. But uh, you know what, Sam Irwin? I'm going to take the, how was your weekend? I'm going to tell you about my weekend. You know what? F- fill me in on your on your weekend, because I know it was it was, a, it was a big one. I had a had a birthday party for the golden child, Kendall Grace, turned mm-hmm. four uh, on Sunday. But, you know, before you have a birthday party, Sam Irwin, you have to get everything ready. Mm-hmm. So you got to make sure the yard's mowed, because if I don't mow the yard and don't have it trimmed up nice and neat and the bush is trimmed, uh, and everything, you know. I, exactly. Then, I, then yeah. I hear from the world heavyweight champion, hell, you didn't mow your yard. Yeah, right. What to hell? God. Ah, yeah. The grass is a little long. <laughs> but, uh, no, got right. the yard mowed and got some landscaping done and, and that done. And then had, of course, run to the grocery store and get cupcakes and decorations and get all that done. And then finally had the party on Sunday, and she was so excited. She was. And uh, a mm-hmm. great weekend for her. She got a new bike. She's learned how to ride a bike already at so, of course, training wheels, but Ooh. we're getting there. Right, right. You know, she didn't have right. long legs like her father or her mother. So, you know. Right. She's, yeah, she's. She's uh, way ahead of me. Is... I didn't learn how to ride yeah. a bike until I was uh, seventh grade. Good God, man. Didn't need to. Your old childhood. Didn't need to. Didn't need to. I walked what? everywhere. Everybody came to my house to play wiffle ball. Oh, well, I guess you got nowhere to go. But it doesn't really matter. And, you know, we had, <laughs> we had an IJ and a CVS two blocks away there in Florida. So I didn't need to. Didn't need a bike for anything, but boy, I tell you what, once I learned how to ride, oh, I went everywhere. Man. Everywhere. Oh, you're the freedom that you have when you get a bike when you're a kid, the freedom. Oh, yeah. Unless you were me, because I lived like, you know, seven miles from town. Right. So that really didn't matter right. too much. Right. <laughs> but no, great weekend for us, and uh, it, was, it was so <laughs> much fun. Had had family up and over, and it was just nice. It's outside and, and had lunch, and, and she opened presents outside. And... Now, now let me ask you about uh, about this party, and and I think it's great what they what they do now. But I isn't it just? I mean, compared to when we were kids, doesn't seem like it's really a lot of work and a lot of production. Oh. For, I mean, good God, it used to just be. Here's a cake. Let's sing happy birthday. Here's a few presents. Now play in the yard. Now it's got to have a theme. It's got. Oh, we had have... a theme. You a uh, Mickey Minnie Mouse. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that you got to have it all, man. We keep and it pretty just... simple. We don't go too big. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't do. Uh, we're still doing family this year. Next year we'll probably do some friends, because you know my child is starting to make tons of friends. I don't know how where she gets that from. Mm-hmm. Uh, Her mother. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, it, no, it was great and uh, things. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was nice weather. I was a little warm, but we could found some shade and got to stay outside. Right. So. Uh, what what did uh, what did Booze Cow bring the golden child as an offering for her birthday? Uh, a, a helmet, a bike helmet for her. Ooh. And a frozen Ooh. blanket. So we're all frozen out around here now. Oh, I tell you. Just ya. magical yeah. to hear it let it go all the time. How many times have you watched that last? I have not watched it once, thank you very much, the full thing through. Real? Nope. Because you pass out. Yep, that's, that's correct, sir. <laughs> Nighty night. It's usually on during nap time for Kendall Grace, and that's usually right. when I take mine too. But uh, no, we got a big mm-hmm. show ahead of us tonight. We've got Brian uh, Pigman Quaka coming in, Justin Cook as well from Justin Cook Management. Both those guys go hand in hand, and uh, Justin, good friend of ours, and we're excited to to sit down and talk to Brian, the Pigman, and uh, find out about hunting a little bit. And, and oh, there's gonna be some stories. I'm there. sure there is. I'm sure. Uh, we'll talk about the NBA coming back with 22 teams, which doesn't make any sense to me, so we'll get into that. Major League <laughs> Baseball, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about a plethora of different oh, things. Oh, there it is. Now, the big word of the week, Sam Irwin. Mm-hmm. But before we get into all that, we're going to hear from our presenting sponsor, Ford of Tuscola. And if you haven't noticed at the bottom of the screen, we have a new sponsor, Sam Irwin. Busey Bank now on. They're a sponsor of our scrolling tickers. We thank them for mm-hmm. coming on as a sponsor as well, but... Right now, we'll hear from our presenting sponsor, Ford at Tuscola. If you're looking for a new or pre-owned vehicle, get rid of that hoopty. 
Give them a call at 253-3353 or visit them online at FordaTuscola.com. We'll be right back here at the Cheap Seats Bar and Grill with the Behind the Mic Show. Tax time means savings time at Ford of Tuscola. The Behind the Mic Show and Ford of Tuscola have teamed up to save you an extra $250 on your next vehicle purchase just by being a listener. They have a great selection of both new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs starting at $24.95. Mention the Behind the Mic Show when you stop by or email btm at fordoftuscola.com for more information. Ford of Tuscola. It's small town feels with great big deals welcome back everybody sling and sammy here with you and as always my co-host what are you doing taking my lines shut your mouth it's my turn this time so anyway uh we thought we just mixed up a little bit so welcome back and we are going to do of course our fast five keith gibson not a lot of topics in sports this week but we're going to do the best we can okay are hey, you ready we've got through COVID. Five? we can do anything we can do anything. That's right. So, yeah. So, people, you're welcome with our creativity. <laughs> so, anyway. So, this week, Keith Gibson. Obviously, I'm ready. there's still a lot, of, a lot of protesting going on. And Drew Brees. Drew Brees. Uh, had a rough week. Bless his heart. Uh, originally had a deal where he came out on video. And he is a big proponent of standing during the National Anthem. Okay. I have no issue with that, of course. Uh, but then he does have a problem with those that do take a knee even though several of his teammates have, you know, taken that stance as well. Um, And then he came out after he caught a lot of – I was like – I was thinking to myself, Keith Gibson, I don't know about you, uh, bad timing. Yeah. Considering what's going on in the country. Maybe let's not talk about that right now. Uh, But then he came back and apologized. Then Donald Trump got involved, and you know, because he's anti-kneeling, you know, during the national anthem. Uh, And then Drew Brees told Trump to shut his mouth, and I support my players now. So now – Drew Brees is just, it's whipping around. And now his wife is, uh, is is saying that they're the problem. and It's just a mess in Drew Brees' world right now. Keith Gibson, your thoughts. I understand both sides. I understand uh-huh. Drew Brees' side. As my grandfather was a veteran, I understand his side. Mm-hmm. I understand the kneeling side as well. You're wanting to make a, a statement. You're wanting to make a point. Um, has this gone way out of proportion and, and blown up way too much? Yes, and a part of it is because, once again... There's nothing else to talk to, so the media latched onto something, and now let's make a big deal of it. Um, mm-hmm. Do I think it was proper timing? No. Do I? <laughs> yeah. The timing was awful. Um, uh huh. But uh, you know, I, 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 I don't really have a side to pick in this fight. I don't. Um, mm-hmm. I understand both sides. I understand wanting to stand and, and putting your hand over your heart, and and I think that's mm-hmm. just respectful of, of the American flag. But I also understand mm-hmm. the other side wanting to kneel and, and what it's meant for um, and what mm-hmm. it stands for. So, there, mm-hmm. I mean, who's right, who's wrong, I don't know, but uh, Drew Brees may take some extra hard hits this year. I know that from some guys. Is, yeah, and I was, was going to say. I don't uh, know if he can. Yeah, yeah, and it, the, I think the positive about this is that he and his teammates were able to talk about it, you know, and kind of come to an agreement. And maybe Wait a minute, you mean they the communicated? Side, yeah, once again, like we talked la- talk last week, maybe a little communication going on there, God forbid, right? So uh, I think he's now more understanding. I'm not sure how he wasn't four years ago when all this started and then the time that you've been around your teammates, but I digress, it's a different time, you know. So, uh, But I, like you, uh, I will always stand for the national anthem. That is, you know, just what I do. I stand there quietly. I show respect. I um, sing. Yeah, I, I do not because that's not respectful for me to sing anything. True. So uh, I just, yeah, I, I let people who can sing do that. Um, but I also, you know, the thing that people forget is the kneeling during that was never about the national anthem. It was never about the troops. It was about what's happening right now right. where they ignored Kaepernick and ran him out of the league. So they twisted it, made it political of this is what he's doing. And it made everybody mad when that wasn't the case in the first place. In fact, if you recall, Kaepernick talked to, I believe he was a former Navy SEAL or something like that, that told him, okay, if you want to do this, this is how you respectfully do this. So he quietly took a knee. He didn't do anything else. And, of course, it blew, as we know, you know, blew way out of proportion. Uh, so, once again, I'm like you. I see both sides. And, 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 Keith, whenever I was a principal, I used to have to shut down. I did this one time at a basketball game, a junior high basketball game, and I had to stop the playing of the national anthem went over and pushed stop because the crowd hats were on people laughing to adults mind you not the kids adults laughing talking not paying attention whatever so i stopped i got the microphone and i said we're going to try this again and you will remove your hat 
and you will keep your mouth shut or you will not be in this gym. I will ban you for the year. That's up to you. And it got stone silent. We had no problems from that point on. So there you go. Now that's a, a different world. You know, they weren't silently protesting. They were just being right. Right. what they were. So anyway, so just interesting times. And once again, in this day and age, I think it's, uh, you gotta be, gotta be careful what you're, what you're going to say, I think, especially in this day and time. So anyway, Anything else on that topic before we move on? Keep well, I think you bring up a good point. which moves to this next topic. So what's our next topic? Yeah, next topic. So you know what? I kind of like being two. on this side where I don't have to worry about just bringing out topics. That's right. I just feed you, right? I just feed well, you. What I like to eat. Just, just Give Tommy it to like me. Wingy. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy like wingy. Tommy like wingies. <laughs> <laughs> so that feeds us into our next topic. Roger Goodell then comes out at, after the NFL players, several big stars made a, a video that got put out. And, ooh, Great video, by the uh, way. It was a great video, fantastic Powerful. video. Well, then Roger, yeah, Roger Goodell came out saying the NFL was wrong about not encouraging players to protest four years after Kaepernick. So now they're saying they're wrong because it's blown up in their faces. Well, so they on. could have been leaders in this, and now they're paying the price. What Sam Irwin, uh, it's the NFL. Uh-huh. They're behind in everything. Yes, they are. There's too <laughs> many. There's too many um, people setting their ways running the NFL. Uh huh. Um, times have changed. Time, this isn't ni- early 1980s, even late 80s, early 90s. This mm-hmm. is a different era in sports, and um, the NFL continually drops the ball. It's not very mm-hmm. often that we say that um, they did something right. I mean, the Super Bowl ad was great. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. You know, I had the kids involved and everything yep. like that. But it's not very often we say the NFL does something right. You, yeah. you, you, you want to know what the find... NFL's problem is, Keith Gibson? There's no fun. And they don't practice what they preach. Right. So now they're against it. Well, what, what were you doing the last four years? Because he was trying to tell you what was going on, right? But, of course, like we said earlier, it got twisted. And now you've run him out of league. Now, if I'm Colin Kaepernick, that lawsuit I had, boy, don't that look pretty right now? Yeah, it does. When, when, doesn't it? So he's going to be paid. And you know what? Rightly so. Because we know why he was ran out of the league, which I felt was unjust at the time. And I think you felt the same Oh, way, yeah, correct? without a doubt. And it still is. Mm-hmm. Guy mm-hmm. was very talented, mm-hmm. very talented, but he was pushed out of the league and not signed. But he went basically, basically blackballed. Yes, correct. Um, mm-hmm. From the league, and it was not right. We've we've said he's better than half the the backup oh. quarterbacks in the league for two years now. Absolutely. Yeah, correct. One hundred percent. So anyway, but so once maybe again, Roger Goodell's will... an idiot. Well, and and from what I've been hearing is Roger Goodell has been actually trying to push this for a while. It's the owners, right? They let they let him take the bullets, if you will. Okay. They pay him all that money, and guess what? When you get that money, you get to take all of this. And we're because how many NFL owners have come out and said anything? None that you can think of. Bingo, nothing. So they let Roger Goodell put this video out, and then they just sit back and keep collecting that money. Well, that kind of tells you what's going on in the world to me, right there. Well, here's, so anyway. what, here's what I think I'm gonna, we're going to see this come football season, Sam. You know, COVID mm-hmm. may have a little impact on fans. Right. I think people are getting sick of some of this stuff. I think you're going to see people stay away. If you remember after the '94 strike in baseball. Attendance mm-hmm. dropped humongously. I don't even know if that's a word, yeah. but I'm going to use it tonight. It's a good word tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it dropped big time um, <laughs> in 95. And I think you uh-huh. may see that in the NFL, and I think you may see it in other sports as well. Baseball right. especially, they don't get their act together and come back. Oh, 100%. Yeah, so they need to figure it out pretty quick, and it's not that hard to figure out. All right, next topic. Keith Gibson, the NBA has announced they will start – their season July 31st, as long as there's not a second wave of COVID. Uh, but July 31st, oh, with 22 teams. 22 teams, Keith Gibson. See, when <laughs> I looked at the stats the other day of NBA teams mm-hmm. and their records, mm-hmm. there's quite a few teams of those 22 who are under 500. Ooh, well, that tells you the strength of the NBA, right, doesn't it? Right. Okay, so <laughs> tell me this: How can you be a playoff team if you're coming back and kind of can can kind of pick and choose what you want to do? Mm-hmm. How can you allow? I think the West had three. The East was a lot of T. I I think four, five, or six right there towards the bottom uh-huh. of, the, of the playoff picture uh, right. who were under 500. And not just by a couple games. I'm talking seven, eight games. You're going to play, mm-hmm. what, 22 teams. You're going to play for two weeks to see who can get in, right? Is that, right. These under 500 teams aren't getting in. They're not getting in, no. So why so not take, as, think, where you're at now, why not take the top five or six from each side who are over 500 and put them in. Well, I think it's kind of like what I talked about a while back when we were talking about what the NBA may do. I think it just kind of helps these guys get a little better condition, give them some practice games practice. If you will, for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So those teams that are already in like the Lakers and, and things, it's just practice for them to get back in game playing shape, 
then the, then the playoffs can start. So, yeah, those teams that are like seven games out, no, they're not. But here's, here's my no. thing. It's 22 teams. If you have 22, why don't you just put all 30 in? Let everybody play. No, I don't. I was going to say, just make it a round-robin tournament or something like that. Do something different. Who cares? And, and go with it. You know, I just don't get the, where the 22 came from. I have no idea how they came up with that. Not a clue. So, there must. I'm sure the brain trust involved. Here's what I, here's what I do know, Sam Irwin, mm-hmm. is the top teams in the NBA are going to be mm-hmm. refreshed, yep. fresh legs. Anybody yep. who was hurt could be back and healthy. Yep. Yeah. There could be a total dynamic of – you could see a shift. You could see a shift of some of these under 500 teams who had maybe had guys hurt. That could yeah. be a way they could get in or, or really make an impact in playoff time. Um, but right. I think the Lakers are going to be a force to mm-hmm. to mess with in, in the playoffs. Well, and, and I think what you're going to see too is, you know, even some of these great teams, it's going to take a little bit to get back to being able to play together. That's what that two weeks is important for is it's just practice and real-life stuff and – and go from there. So, I mean... Uh, you got to get your rhythm. You know, These guys haven't played together now for three months. Absolutely. 100%. Yes, sir. All right. Next topic, Keith Gibson. Major League Baseball has now come back after the players wanted a certain amount of games, and now MLB says 75. So, at least it sounds like there's some negotiations Didn't I say on. this last week? Mm-hmm. Players wanted 114. Owners wanted 50. Yeah. I said play 75, 80 games. Meet in the middle. If yeah, this doesn't there work, there's no baseball this year, and then I'm really – If this does not go through, there will be no baseball. Yes. That is correct. Agreed. Yes, they will be out. And that just and tells me how some... hungry and greedy yep. and these guys Ooh. are, and you don't want to do that because uh-huh. you're going to just have another season like we just talked about yep. in 94. Yep, yep. And Keith Gibson, baseball cannot afford to have this happen to them. They need to understand this is a long-term plan, and you need to be showing – you know, some empathy to people that have been out of work. You need to take a step back and say, okay, you know, this season we'll do this. Right. And then we can start again fresh next season. Because baseball's had enough trouble. Lots of bad news, lots of bad things. They had a strike before that about killed the sport. Right. If it wasn't for Mark if it wasn't for Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa being all juiced up and put on a show that next year we may not have baseball at all. Speaking so of that documentary's post. coming up this weekend too. Can't wait for that. Yep. That's right. So we'll be talking about that next week. Um, but yes, I think really you know, they got to come up with something, anything. They got to play, well, and they got to make Well, with these 75 games, they said the regular season went on October 31st, which I still think is way too late. Way mm-hmm. too late, because you're going to end up right. in December. But just give me right. some baseball. Yeah. We're being greedy. This is, they're, they're showing 75% prorated salaries. Excuse me, gentlemen, if you were a Major League Baseball player, it's now July, July, middle of July 4th is like the second half of the season anyway. Right. So you're going right. to be making for something to sit on your butt. Right. What's the problem? Don't be that greedy. I was going to say, you, you, yeah, you're playing only 75 games, and it's usually, what, 162? Right. Right? And you're getting 75% of your pay? Correct. You signed me up. Damn, are you kidding? Good Lord, there's nothing to talk about. Good God. Right. But anyway, so such as life. So we'll see what happens. It's a business. Continue to negotiate. It's a business, 100%. So they're figuring out the money on both sides, which I get. All right, and our last topic for the week, Keith Gibson. And I think this happened because of Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. But at the PGA tournament that's actually happening this week, the golfers will be mic'd up. Are you a fan? I am a fan. I think they should always I be mic'd up. I think yeah. athletes should be mic'd up. I love listening to guys yep. um, mm-hmm. mic'd up all the time, you know, especially baseball mm-hmm. players or, or football guys especially because you hear them say things mm-hmm. that uh, I'm pretty sure their mama didn't touch, uh, teach them. Right, right, right. But, no, I think it'll be fun. Um, as long as you get mics on guys who will talk. Right. Don't bore me. Right. You know, there's no point of, right. oh, that was a great shot. No, entertain me. So, yes, I agree with you. And I think, really, once again, because this COVID stuff, people are having to be more creative and make it more interactive. This is the future of sports, Keith Gibson. I think the XFL gave us a little bit of this, too, is instant interviews when they come off the field. Now, mic them up when they're out there. And, yeah, you're going to have to bleep some stuff and, and, and things like that. I mean, that's understandable. Well, that's why there's a five-second delay on everything. And that's right. You can bleep them out. Yes. So I think not this on this show. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah, we probably need it, especially last week. But uh, but no, I think this is showing you the future of sports because we want more interaction. We want more behind the scenes. We want to hear what's going on in the huddle. We want to hear why did you call that play. I think that adds more to the sport and gets more people interested. Do you think that's part of the reason Tony Romo made so much money? Is he he gives you more of an insight than anybody else ever has? 100%. It was like a coach in the booth, and he was predicting plays. And I, and I actually watched some NFL games I wouldn't normally watch just to listen to him because 
it was like it was definitely like a player that was on the field that is putting you in that huddle, telling you what's going on, why this guy did that. Usually those guys would just like Madden. I could never stand Madden. Boom, 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 fumble, boom. And he's supposed to be the greatest. I'm like, he was awful. I'm sorry. And I don't care if I make anybody mad or not. He was terrible. Terrible. But uh, but people like people like a Romo can put you inside of the game. And and I think that's what really draws people in. And that's why I like Tony Romo. We didn't I didn't like him as a cowboy. I didn't think he was a great quarterback. He is from EIU, but 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 listen right. to him talk. Mm-hmm. That's the guys they need to start getting more and more in on TV. Not not mm-hmm. uh, Joe Buck and not uh, Troy Aikman's okay, but Aikman's still he's not. Eh. Yeah, um, I would yeah. rather have Romo any day of the week and guys like and him. And then and then you know who we need, Peyton Manning. Yes, on any football broadcast, I don't care. Put him on Monday Night Football, Sunday Night. It, I give him all the money because he would be with his humor and his insight and his intelligence would be phenomenal. You saying he'd be better than Booger McFarland? J- just a tad. <laughs> is he not awful? Just yeah, awful. He is. Anyway. All right. Well, everybody, that is our fast five for the week. Keith Gibson gave you a little bit of a break there. Let you sit back. That was nice. Just, I might start looking at that great? more often. That's right. So, yes, so that's our fast five. And, uh, Keith, what do we have coming up next for our listening fans? Uh, next, we'll bring in Brian Pigman Quacka to the show for an interview. You know, Brian's on the Sportsman's Channel. We're looking forward to that. Him and Justin Cook of Justin Cook Management and one of our dear friends. And so we're looking forward to that. We'll be right back here on the Behind the Mic Show from the Cheap Seats Sports Bar and Grill. Morgan's Place Canine Salon has been offering exclusive one-on-one grooming services in the Champaign area for over 12 years. Using all natural products, giving lots of love to your dog. Visit www.morgansplace.me to learn more. Morgan's Place, making dogs beautiful. This is Dow Tao Bosco, the world heavyweight champion. Drink your beer, eat your chicken, and listen to the Behind the Mic show. And welcome back. Pigman, how did you get started in all this? Let's start there. How did you get started with, with TV and, and everything? And, and and Cook, I mean, you, you brought him along. Uh, but how, how did you get started? <coughs> uh, I don't know, man. I just killed a lot of pigs. And... Uh, <laughs> I always thought it would be a pretty good idea because actually I had people that done um, outdoor shows on outdoor channel. And actually when versus had a network and I, you know, I, the one guy is a friend of mine from outdoor channel, uh, Tom Nelson, it's the longest running all archery show, only archery show uh, on outdoor channel. And he's a great guy, but, and then they brought a guy down and I took, they're like, man, you got to get this guy. He's never killed a pig with a bow. And then he said, oh, well, yeah, he's from up north. So I took him hunting, and it was all, it all was the fakest bunch of stuff I ever done. And I, the producer said, man, have you ever thought about doing TV? And uh, you kind of made our guy look stupid. And I said, well, that's not real hard. <laughs> <laughs> you can be a DM and, uh, and make him look stupid. But I just started – we just started talking to the network, and, and everybody, you know, said – that a pig hunting show wouldn't work. So, uh, they get that, uh, they get that home Depot wheelbarrow with their ass handed to them in it all the time. So we just, <laughs> it's so easy, man. It's not hard. It's just like, mm-hmm. all you got to do is make what people want to see and, and don't, don't lie about a product that ain't good and don't mm-hmm. recreate. Like I know that they're like big network TV is reality TV. No, it's not. It's scripted TV. I've done that. Mm -hmm. And it's lies. And you Mm -hmm. have a producer standing right over here telling me every line to say. So one of the interesting things about the show is, is if you notice, I never walk up on an animal that's already set up. It's Mm -hmm. alive because if it jumps up and I have to shoot it again or something, you have to create those little bitty windows that something might possibly actually go awry. And you get Mm -hmm. a big charge or a pig gets up and takes off. Or you sneak up on one and he's still and he's not dead and you shoot him again. So it's not it's not hard, man. And then with Justin, uh, I mean, it's, he's like the he, making TV was like ten percent, and uh, dealing with him was ninety percent of the pain in the ass. <laughs> hey, because, right. Uh, well, we understand that too. He's a good guy. Engineer. He's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's like come full circle because like where I wanted to take it, uh, we reached that long time ago and mm-hmm. uh now justin does stuff that i don't even want to be involved with unless mm-hmm. I, unless i do something like this and talk about it i 
I don't want to think about it. I don't want to stay on the phone that long because making an outdoor TV show, the actual making of the episode is 30% of the work. The rest of it is in business and chasing uh, money down and new sponsors and uh, like advertising proposals and one sheets. And we got Colton right back here and we got Dennis. So we started with, with me and my friend Keith and Justin. And then Keith got busy in the oil field and Justin kind of took that spot over. And uh, since then, we just, you know, we're trying to grow into the non-endemic space and just promote the best we can. You know, and our newest partnership is Protect the Harvest, which is a Lucas Oil uh, charity or funded charity. And uh, it's a pretty good deal so far. Pig Baby, I mean, you, you say you had Colton, as in Colton Bailey, back behind you? Boy, Look at time! That. What's happening, Look brother? <laughs> I coached him. Where I'm at I right coached now, him in so Little you know, League. Uh-huh. Look yep. at my man. Look at old Nack Nackerson. Uh, <laughs> so my man right over here. Let me let me point him out. That guy right back there uh-huh. is about where Justin was in year uh, end of year one. So what's happened is Justin is training in Colton, and Colton is kind of training Landon. And uh, I basically just tell them guys, you know, I don't want to have to like at first. Justin would do a no, – nobody really had representation. So the, the, he, these guys come – he would come back to me and be like, hey, they said this, they said that. I said, I don't care. <laughs> I said, shoot the hostage. You make the decision. <laughs> I stand behind that decision. You cannot operate micromanaging these guys because it's – there's no playbook because every single relationship and partnership is totally different from – personality to personality i may have a person i may have a friendship with the ceo of a company that the guy that does exactly what i do has i mean he's talking to the marketing director so i just step right over them and go to the ceo and we kind of run it like uh we kind of like the goddies man i mean we don't we don't take a bunch of crap i don't get talked mm-hmm. too crazy i'll hang up quick mm-hmm. and uh well, we're good at what we do but with these guys like Colton pretty much is running all the social and you can look at our channels. I mean, we're just, we're destroying everybody. We, we noticed. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, but it's them. I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. I, they, they, they rob content off of what we film or send me something and say, Hey, shoot a little video on this. I will tell you, I do not to take, I shoot my videos and one take. That's what mm-hmm. I do. And I think, I think that's why I resonate with people and especially children. Because mm-hmm. they know I'm real, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm kind of like SpongeBob, man. We'll put SpongeBob out of business. But I got a good team. <laughs> I got a really good team, and uh, like I say, dude, making TV and killing is very easy. Because well, mm-hmm. I've been doing it my whole life. Right, it's fun for right. you. I mean, it, it, right. What's what? Yeah. So, what's your biggest rush now? What I mean, what do you? What kind of rush do you get? I know it's got to be killing a pig, but but I'm a big give, one. Yeah. Um, I, I could give you some numbers, uh, but I, I can't do that. And it's, it's a routing number and an account number to my account. <laughs> that's the biggest rush. Well, I actually get paid by a sponsor and it's on time. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I, I have a little spot in my uh, – Justin says, yep, we got a check. So uh, <laughs> that's my greatest trophy. This is a business. I'm running a business. Uh, and killing animals and making great TV is all wonderful as long as you do what everybody else does or most people, especially right now self-funding so they can see themselves on tv see mm-hmm. i don't care anything about that when the checks stop you will not see this face anymore mm-hmm. you will see somebody else that's probably a trust fund kid that's dad has bought them the brand and they can be the big man mm-hmm. and my last episode will be a challenge and i get beat and i take that uh, 20 million dollar check and uh you'll see i when you see me the next time i'm gonna look like ricardo Montalban <laughs> and tattoo we're gonna be on fantasy island the plane that's where we're going to be, man. You do a I'm lot of charity. Size guy, though, I ain't going to have one of those little midgets. You do a lot of charity work too, my man. Uh, you you do. Yep. You do. A, you have a lot back. You do. You know, kind of like this podcast. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah, we do appreciate it. Yeah. You ain't. Yeah. Hey, that's you ain't right. shitting. Yeah. What are you doing, uh, what, dude? Do you got a do you got a highlighter in your hand? I do. Always have one. It's my thing. Oh, what? To, uh, to wave. You ain't even using it, man. You ain't even using it. It's a prop. Don't it's lie. nothing but a prop. <laughs> it That's is. all it is. A prop. Yeah. That's why I like now, you. Now, uh, so what other questions do you got? You want to know about what? 
I, basically, like a question I have, you've hunted all over the world, of course. What has been your most exciting hunt that you can think of, whether it was pigs or anything around the world? What was your favorite hunt of all time? I, man, I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy all of it. You know, I, I'm kind of a guy. I like the, I like to bait the big pigs in and shoot them with a bow. But uh, the African bush pigs, one of my favorite, because it's a, uh, it, it's totally different than anything that we have here. I mean, these things are friggin', it's like our pigs on steroids. <laughs> you know, they're, they're nuts, man. And I mean, they, they don't, you don't just bait them to corn. It's rotten meat and stuff like that. And that's what they come to. But uh, probably the scariest, I guess, would probably be the lions that I shot. And I don't remember when, a uh, long time ago in mm-hmm. Africa, I shot a male and a female on the same day with the bow. And nobody's ever done that in 2014. So nobody ever done that up to that point. And the, the female, uh, I, I had to stop the professional hunter because he was walking straight up on her. I saw her ears and I, I stopped him and he's looking at me like I was crazy. But I shot her again, and but she wanted to kill us. There's no doubt. Okay. Matt, my cameraman, had his, his noise canceling uh, muffs on. And he, I mean, he was pointing when we walked up on the mail, he could hear it you know, and uh-huh. we'd have no clue it was there. So, um, it, that was pretty, uh, I was glad that was over. It's one thing to see them mounted, but when you see them and, and you see them things in their element and like these, these, these lions had been killing, uh, the sable wiping up a, a herd of sable out. I mean, they was losing like a sable bull a day. Wow. Mm. And, uh, the guys were like, you got to come kill it. And, kill them and we did but i wanted to do it with a bow so mm-hmm. anyway wow that I, dude i've I, any more though man like uh my son when my son hunts i enjoy that my wife uh which you've seen junie you guys she had her own show i produced it mm-hmm. uh, these guys ran her social they still run her social channel and like we've kind of kept her out of the because I, I don't really like people uh these uh keyboard jockeys threatening my wife uh, mm. And the kids, like she's a bad mom because she hunts and and somebody ought to kill one of our kids. So listen, man, I don't want to get started down that road. Right. Here's the thing. I am the nicest guy in the world. You, There are a few things that you cannot tread on. You touch certain parts of my life and uh, man, I, I, ain't, I ain't scared of nothing but a snake. Mm-hmm. So you better bring a snake to the fight and you mm. better hope it fights and kills me. So I just, we took her away and if we if we hammered her social media, uh, I was talking to the guys from PSC today. Just actually, he just called me a few minutes ago. But my earlier conversation today with the marketing director and the vice president of sales for PSC, Junie has not posted nearly like what we was doing before. But what we found is her engagement is really strong, uh, and when we do post together, it's really strong. So it's almost like early years, Pig Man was hell with everything run and gun kill everything and man i've killed enough i mean people ask me that all the time how many deer you kill with a bow i said since tv or since i've been hunting Mm -hmm. and i tell them and this makes people mad and i but i'm gonna say it right here i killed more pope and young whitetails with the bow before i was 30 than miles keller killed in his entire career so i because it's where i'm from right and we have we have mld managed land programs or mm-hmm. you can shoot your Some of these ranches are shooting 150 bucks and 200 does. Wow. So I've had the opportunities to do things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's, well, about I, it. I think, I think a lot of people don't understand the conservation side of it too, that you got to keep them thinned down as well. Correct. Cause the damage pigs can do and, and things like that. Right. Oh yeah. You're never going to, you you'll never contain the, the feral hog population. It's just not going to happen. Uh, you know, you, you're, you can't kill enough of them. I mean, maybe if we flew a hundred helicopter trips per day for mm-hmm. the full season, but man, it's, it's for retar- people say like 7 million. Some people will tell you 12 million, but wow. you got to think if a sow can have two to three litters a year and she has an average of five pigs, which I've seen one pig have 12 and half of them are sows. And then, by seven, eight months, they're ready to breed too. You got a problem. Yeah. And then conservation wise, as far as whitetail, it's like anything else. It's, it's, a, it's the guy right up there. And it's like, a, 
it's a cleansing. It's a purge because mm-hmm. that's where the diseases come from. Overpopulation mm-hmm. causes disease. And uh, you've really seen it hit hard in the Midwest on whitetail with uh, chronic wasting disease, blue tongue, that sort of thing. And you, it's, it's, a, it's a fact of life. I mean, mm-hmm. let's just say it like this. Let's say that a horse, no, let's do better than that. Let's say that a cow never died. So oh, I'd go hungry. Living beings have to <laughs> pass. And that's just, that's the way it is. And if you're, if you're not smart enough to understand that and you live in a fictitious world and believe that all dogs should live forever and all animals should live forever and animals are not made for consumption from human beings and raising animals for that purpose, then we're, we're dealing with that right now with all this COVID stuff. And people, it's amazing to me that just how damn stupid people are. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, man. No, you're, you're done. You're done you, know, with that. you can eat all the lettuce you want to, and you will die a yeah. lot sooner than I will because we are carnivores. We was made to consume meat. That's why I got a big and belly. I don't need nobody. I don't, well, I mean, I don't know where you live, but I'm sure there's a shortage in that area right now. <laughs> it's all on my neck. I'm saying <laughs> you, you have to teach. It's not just the conservation part, but you have to teach your children to be able to fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. What what the hell do you do during a pandemic when you live in the city and you don't know, oh, all the meat's gone out of the supermarket. Well, guess what? Mm-hmm. Uh, you better figure out how to get it yourself. And, oh, by the way, where the hell did that meat come from? An animal lost its life. Mm-hmm. Uh, people say, man, you shoot them in the head or you shoot them with a bow. That's not ethical. Oh, okay. So let's get off oxygen bottle with a plunger on it and pow, a cow right between the eyes. Is that ethical? It's the, it's life, man. It's, this is it. This is what mm-hmm. I do. I'll never change for anybody. And this is what I preach. You know, that's why I think and, Justin uh, gets along with you so well, because I like, I like you. You're a good man. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> you want that routing number? <laughs> you want that routing number? How is it dealing with, how, how is it dealing with Justin every day? Let's let's be to be honest. How is how is it dealing with Justin every day? <laughs> okay, how long was it in it? Eleven years. I fired him thirty-seven times in eleven years. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, I thought it'd be more than that. He's a good man. No, no. He's a good man. We got Jay Pearson's text and my man from Protect the Harvest. No, it's been good. And we mm-hmm. Justin has brought some really good things to the table, and he is business wise the things that he does. Uh, is beyond what I, number one, I can't do it. Number two, I would never search. That's not my job. I'm an entertainer. Mm-hmm. So I don't really want to do, but so much. And I, you know, I mean, we're sitting here in a hotel now uh, in Springfield and we have Bass Pro Shop meetings all day tomorrow with the, the head people. So we've moved up the chain from just a personality that Bass Pro Shop sponsors as somebody that Bass Pro and Cabela's listens to because they know how hard I work for them. And I tell people this all the time. One of one of my biggest uh, heroes is Johnny Morris because this guy started from nothing, Mm -hmm. uh, selling lures out of the trunk of a car and built an empire for his family. And uh, I, I, I wished that I was smart as he is, but people kind of give me the Huckleberry Dillinger thing all the time. Look, I'm maybe I'm a redneck. It's okay. Maybe I'm from Texas, maybe blah, 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 all this, but uh, I've done this long enough where you can't blow no smoke because I, mm-hmm. I know what you're doing. And uh, we move on really quick, but uh, we've picked up some really big sponsors, non-endemics over the last couple of years. And uh, I think things are going in a pretty good direction. Uh, if me and Junie, done the majority of the episodes together we would totally destroy everybody in outdoor television there would be nobody even on the radar it would be a joke the only way that they rate they get people that rate where i rate as far as a a ranking of month to month on the network is if they give me 30 airings and they give them 60 Mm -hmm. that's the only way if they give me mono a mono episodes i destroy every show Mm -hmm. every month so, because if people want to hear the truth, right, and I'm not going to tell it no other way. Well, I like that. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, going on hunts with uh, my best friend since Little League, Matt McGrew, old rug? You know, he might be the worst guy I've ever hunted with. <laughs> I think I, thank you. Somebody had to say No. Thing. Finally, Let somebody said it. <laughs> so, I feel like – I feel like um, – so, of uh, three examples. I feel like I'm made uh, to be in front of the camera and do – entertaining television whether it be hunting or whatever justin was made to do this type of business and manage brands mm -hmm. because it's not just getting new businesses protecting what we have and maintaining that business and keeping somebody uh legally from trying to poach mm -hmm. you know and matt mcgrew was made to be a guide mm -hmm. that's all he wants to do that's what he's good at and i can tell you over my 11 years it is now Matt is definitely, um, and I'm even talking about guys from Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, uh, all the Western states. I've hunted in all of those. Matt, you could drop Matt anywhere and give him a couple of weeks to figure things out. And that dude is just, that's what he's meant to do. He's mm -hmm. good with people. Mm -hmm. uh, he don't talk a lot, but when he says something, he means it. And mm -hmm. he, he takes care of you. And he mm -hmm. gives you the opportunities. And that's what a guy's supposed to do. Yeah. So I would say that he is the number one out of out of all the guys I've ever hunted with. Wow, if I wow. wanted to start a new hunting operation somewhere, I, I have tried to poach him. <laughs> yeah. I have I've tried to get him to run my place, uh -huh. and uh, but he's got other things he's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Justin has got see my manager is on Facebook watching some dude crash through it. It's Sam Irwin's post. Look at this. Well, Look oh, at this guy right here, man. Oh, how great is that on. video? Yeah, talent. Watch it, talent. Ouch! <laughs> I mean, it just it hurts. <laughs> it, it hurts a lot, it Sambo. Does. It does. It hurts so much. Yeah. But no, and, that's that's oh, that's great because because Rug listens to this show. He loves it. He'll definitely love hearing from you. I'm sure. And what a great compliment. So thank you for that. No, he's he's uh he got his stuff together, man. And it takes a whole lot. To be that guy, not a not a not just an outfitter, but a, a actual guy, knows where to go, knows what to do, knows the win, and you get you get so many that can do so many things, but they just they suck at knowing where the sun sets. So you're not sitting in a blind and the sun's burning your pupils out, and mm -hmm. like you can't shoot something in a rifle scope when the sun's setting at 90 degrees right in front of you and the pigs is right there. You can't. Mm -hmm. you, it's just it's not good for the camera. And that's part of it. It's not just the hunter, but it's taking somebody that has a film guy with mm -hmm. them and making that happen. And I got to tell you, man, from California to Texas, anywhere I've ever hunted with Matt McGrew, he had it dialed in. And mm -hmm. I would say that if I had to pick somebody at my 200th episode that was that one guide of the decade, that would mm -hmm. be him. That's awesome. Wow. Awesome. So, and, when we get off of this, you can text him my routing number as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was going to say, you, you just, yeah, you just made him some pretty good money. Y'all get some of that, which is sure. Well, Big Man, we appreciate it. We appreciate you and Justin. We do uh, appreciate giving us time. We won't keep you long. I know you guys are busy. I just want one yeah, question. For you. When the hell do you sleep? I don't. I, that's what I, I figured. I ain't slept in 11 years, man. That's what I figured. No, uh, we run pretty hard, but I, we've got better over the years. We used to just like, film into july and august and then like almost have no time off at mm -hmm. all and uh but now we uh i'm trying to wrap now by you know this time of the year june uh i don't really want to hunt past that so once we get this bass pro deal done i'm pretty much done till september mm, good for you uh, so you know it, you learn a lot over the years like i do episodes about my son and my son sacrificed a lot growing up because i was gone uh, mm -hmm. his mother hated it and, uh, but she don't mind cashing that check every month. <laughs> I promise you one thing. She knows that routing number. Yeah. She she right inside there on her hand. So I'm just telling you, man, drain you like a Yeah. <laughs> but now I can spend some time with him. Of course, Junie has two boys. And, uh, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's that time. And we've been approached uh, by a producer that does stuff for, uh, like, flip TV, like, uh, you know how popular that is yeah. now, flipping the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jenny's uh, pretty much, uh, she's the real version of all they portray. She's a carpenter out of this world. Mm. From 
to trim work to cabinets to everything. So I figure sometime in the next year or two, something like that will pop up. So at some point, I'd like to slow down a little bit in outdoor TV and focus a little bit more on the family. That's awesome. Mm. Good for I got to wind it down, but I can't wind it down until Justin says, yes, you can wind it down. There we go. Right. We're, you know, yeah, this COVID that's... thing, I'm going to tell y'all, this COVID thing has been hard on our mm. manufacturers. So I want to say that people that are listening out there, if you give one damn about what we do at all, please take the time to go to our website, pigmantv.com, and look at our sponsors because they're handpicked. They're mm -hmm. not a bunch of people that said, hey, man, I got a fistful of money. You want to check my product out? That ain't the way that works. I don't endorse products that don't work. So mm -hmm. please support them, Good especially you, Bass Pro and Cabela's. And if you, don't, if you don't know, whoop, my phone went down. If you don't know <laughs> what Protect the Harvest is, mm -hmm. you got to check that out. It's, okay. it's, it's a lot of things other than horses and cows and dogs. There's a whole lot to that. And just go to that website and check it out. And I'm um, pretty much, let me see how much time I can give you. I'm done talking to you. Man. It's all right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, really, Ryan, we appreciate you giving us the time. Oh, there yeah, we go. Yeah, all right. There we go. Yeah. We need to get yeah. you a shirt and hat. I'll tell you what, I'll send one to Justin to get one for you. And we do appreciate yes, you. Uh, and Justin will email you the routing number. That's, that's That yes, works perfect. Absolutely. Yes. That works perfect. Well, if you want me to put this on, it's 15 large. Okay. Uh, oh, well, okay. I've got about you for your time. Yeah. I'll see you in about <laughs> 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Brian, we'll uh, that neck, my man. Brian, <laughs> Brian, thank thank you for your time. We loved it. Uh, we appreciate you, and, and keep doing what yes, you're sir. doing, my friend. Thank you, man. All right, have a thank good you. night, Brian. Stay Big safe. Man Quaga here on the Behind the Mic Show for the Cheap Seat Sports Bar and Go. You have kids? Do they need a pet? Look no further than Turner's House of Goats. They have happy goats, jumping goats, one-eyed goats, and sleeping goats. Stop by Turner's House of Goats in Bible Grove, where goats are great and prices aren't bad. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, behind the mic show, Keith Gibson, Sam Irwin, and we bring you, as we uh, get ready to close up the show here, we bring you our dumbass criminal of the week. And this one, Sam uh -huh. Irwin, is a doozy. Yeah, and I'm hearing... It may be pretty local to our old hometown. It, is, that it is. It is. It's very local Perfect. to our own own hometown in uh, down there in Clay County, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sam, let let me read this to you. This is uh, yeah, courtesy of the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Sheriff Andy Myers, we love Andy. Mm -hmm. Reports that at approximately eleven fifty a.m. back uh, a few days ago, that Clay County Sheriff's Office took Joshua D. Tucker, thirty of Lisville. In custody for damaging the sheriff's office. Oh. Sheriff's office personnel heard a disturbance outside the office, and once outside the office, they observed the front windows had been broken, along with damage, and Tucker was taken into custody. It gets mm. better, Sam Irwin. It gets oh, better. okay. I was going to say, what? yeah, there's, is there a punchline to this? There it is. must be. Uh -huh. During previous contacts with Tucker, uh, he made indications that he wanted to be arrested due to his girlfriend being in custody in Clay County Jail. And being homeless. Now, I don't like the fact that he was homeless. but I don't uh, like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Uh, but, but he wanted to be in jail with his girlfriend. Mm. Tucker was later transported to a nearby county jail and did not get to spend any time with his uh, girlfriend. Oh, oh. The investigation being handled by the Illinois State Police and is an accusation mm. and the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. So, Mr. Tucker, Sam Irwin, wanted to be with his girlfriend. Wanted that true love inside Clay County. Sheriff's office inside the jail, but yeah. didn't get it. Hey, you know, and Keith gets. You know, we laugh. You know, and in this segment, but would you try to break into jail if, if the queen was in there for a crime? Would you try to break in to join her? No. <laughs> <laughs> nope, me. Either. It's like I'll see you when you get out. <laughs> no. Why do I want to be locked up too? Oh, that's what I'm saying. And you know what? I'll tell you a line my old man told me whenever I was like, I don't know. 16, I think, and you know, you start to think, yeah, I can get out and do things. They got your driver's license and all that. Going to go uptown on Friday night, cruise Maine or Saturday night or whatever. And he told me, he says, Sammy, he said, if you ever go to jail, make sure and call me first. And I said, why is that? He goes, because I like to laugh over the phone. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your dumbass criminal of the week. Thank you. thank you. We'll be right back here on the Behind the Mic Show with our final thoughts. 
Bees Trees, your local ISA certified arborist with over 10 years experience specializing in tree removal, tree trimming, and with free estimates. Call Greg Miller of Bees Trees today at 217-260-4551. Back here on the Behind the Mic Show, Keith Gibson, Sam Irwin from the Cheap Seat Sports Bar and Grill. And what's your place called? Sammy's Palace of Love? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. With your the cat? Shack, baby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. As we, no, uh, as we close out the Leave show today, uh, Sammy, what a, what a fun show. I mean, it really has wow. been. We, we, we hit, it's been a fast and furious type of show. Uh, uh-huh. Pigman was on, and, and what a guy. We, we can't thank uh, our good friend Justin Cook, Justin Cook Management, mm-hmm. for uh, hooking us up and, and having Pigman on. And, and it was great to see him and, and Colton Bailey guys and Dennis Cook and those guys from all oh, that. Uh, but just what a, what a treat. Like, and you know what? I can see why that guy's show has been on TV for 11 years and why it's successful because that guy that we just had on here, that's exactly how he is 24-7. And people are drawn to that. And he's good at what he does, but he's entertaining. That's probably one of the most intense people I've ever met in my life. I mean, he is driven, and that was just Pretty awesome. really damn good. Yeah. It was. And it then was. the shout-out to Rug was awesome as well. It's nice to hear that you're – you know, the best friend in the world is quite possibly maybe the best hunting guide in the world, too. That's pretty damn cool. It is. So. You know, they, they always say, you know, uh, you always know where you grow up, and you always remember that it's always home. You know, we, we've talked about that a lot. We know we talk about Clay County mm-hmm. where we grew up. But guys like Pigman and Justin and Colton and, and Dennis and, and these guys who were, you know, we keep in contact with, there's, <clears> there's a reason for that. There's a lot of successful people that come out of Clay County, and mm-hmm. uh, there are a few of them. So we appreciate them and uh, – yeah, what a, what an interview. That was great. But, hey, wow. other things going yeah. on, too, Sam Irwin. Uh, people who haven't maybe paid attention, the, the Behind the Mic Show group on Facebook, we've got a greatest sports video games of all time tournament going on. It's getting intense, It is. Man. It's getting tough. People yeah. are saying they don't know what they want to choose. Uh, mm-hmm. Say it's tough. Well, I made it tough for a reason, people. Right. I'm cha- challenge the mind a little bit. Right. God forbid, right. Keith Gibson. Yeah. So, no, it's getting a lot of votes, which is great. A lot of feedback. Awesome. Can't wait to see what the final four will be. Well, I, I can't either. That'll happen this start this weekend. So the final four, and then, uh, uh, Sammy, you came up with a great idea. After this one's done, what are we gonna do next? Well, actually, I stole this from I think a, high, a Florida high school football player that shared, and I thought, you know, maybe we could do this. But it's basically a rock bands. So we're gonna we're gonna pick out sixteen rock bands throughout the years. Might be a little Led Zeppelin. Might be a little Metallica. So all easy, all easy. generations. Guns and Roses. I mean, you know, a lot of things going on there. And we're going to do it again because this has been a lot of fun. And now we want to see you know, the Beatles as well, which I always felt were extremely overrated. That's for you, Michael Willis. Uh, but uh, I know he listens to the show. <laughs> Is that a name Beatles drop fan. right there? Go Yoko. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so that'll be fun. So that'll be our next thing that we do after this one's over. Yeah, and, looking forward to and that. And then don't forget, we've got the BTM Show Golf Outing coming up August 22nd at the Floor Golf and Country Club. We've got 10 teams, two spots open. If you're a business, it's a great opportunity for you to sponsor a hole or become a sponsor. Justin Cook comes through for us again. Justin Cook Management uh, is uh, our biggest sponsor. Of course, we'll have Florida Tuscola and Busey as sponsors as well. And so uh, we've got a lot, a lot of businesses already... Uh, Signed up for a whole sponsorship, so we thank you. And uh, you might be seeing a little, the world heavyweight champion visiting a few more down in, down in Clay County, seeing if we can get oh, them. And up. who can say no to the world heavyweight champion? And if you don't know he's a world heavyweight champion, he'll tell you. He'll tell you real quick. That's right. Absolutely. Retired, undefeated. That's right. Yeah. Never be. Still, never happen again. No, but uh, and no also, <laughs> if you are in the Champaign area. Uh, make sure you pick up a News Gazette this weekend. You'll see a uh, story on on the show, the Behind the Mic show. Colin Likas from uh, the News Gazette was over uh, um, Tuesday, Monday night. What night? What, Tuesday night? Monday night? Whatever night that was. Anyway, came over and interviewed us. Monday and, night. Yeah, Monday yeah, night. Monday night. And uh, yep. came over and did a story on us, and we're looking forward to it and got some pictures. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. We're growing. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah not bad. But mm-hmm. uh, Sam Irwin, mm-hmm. do you have any final thoughts? On this Thursday, episode 57, 8. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's the, the Pig Man edition of the Behind the Mic the Show. The Pig Man edition. Yes, the Pig Man edition. Um, you know, uh, I mean, not a lot um, other than really, like you said earlier, you know, you, you mentioned Justin Cook, you know, helping us out big time. Uh, Jordan Tolliver has went above and beyond, you know, with hooking us up with some great people. Uh Beth Frost slash Schnar, Schnar uh, 
old buddy of ours, of course, from years ago. She's going to be hooking us up with some people. We got some guests coming, folks, uh, that uh, are, are pretty damn cool. And that's what's helped us out a lot are, are people like that, that, you know, friends that we've got, connections um, that have have definitely helped us out and helped us grow because we don't grow without their help. We don't grow without the listeners that, that have supported the show. We don't grow without, you know, our sponsors. Um, so it's all a community effort of, of something that we just enjoy doing, but we definitely couldn't do it without because Jordan is like, hey, man, I'm working on getting you this guy. I'll get a message. It's like, damn, dude. Okay. Thanks. You know, Thanks. Yeah, no, okay. we appreciate Great. it. You know, fantastic. You know, so it's getting to the point where, you know, bless their hearts, there's so good people that we don't even have to ask now. They're willing to do these kind of things because they enjoy the show, too. So that's that's a lot of fun. And uh, so, you know, as we grow, you know, we we'll just kind of all do it together. It's almost like a little family. Keith it Gibson. is. Little community, you know, so full of love and nurturing and caring. So. Sports, comedy, entertainment, baby. That's what we always say. That's what we are. <laughs> that's right. So, yeah, that's that's my thing. What about you? Um, well, first of all, I'll, I'll start with my final thought that I always uh, say on every show. Be nice. I enjoy Keith Gibson, what did you do? Uh, a nice thing you did so far this week. What have you done that's been nice? I woke up. Good. That's a good start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what right. have I done that's been nice? Um mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't I don't know I'm always <laughs> nice I don't I don't have an answer because I don't think about it I just do nice things Sam or when I you know whether it's right. hold the door for somebody but that's that's things I was taught you know right. um, you know it's mm -hmm. always hold the door for a lady and open the door and you know pull your right. put a chair in and you know it's those are just things that I was taught and man, that's I, you know mm -hmm. I just, how I live my life but be nice mm -hmm. you know what one thing I am happy about and and I won't touch on this too much is is I'm happy to see the the protests are are not dying down but um, communication mm -hmm. has opened up a lot and so i'm happy for that and they're getting results yes yeah mm -hmm. so i'm happy for that um but you know i to, to piggyback what you said as far as my final thoughts uh people uh you listeners and everybody without you all we have nothing and so with our sponsors and for our friends and for anybody who's listened to the show once twice maybe they listen every week we we appreciate you uh i can't mm -hmm. say that enough i mean you help us uh, get t-shirts we do hats you know we got uh, some other fun things coming up like you know mm -hmm. we had pigman this week same i'm just gonna let the cat out of the bag yeah give us a little preview of next week next week's edition of the behind the mic show features uh, a clay county native and a good friend of ours uh, but he's also the hitting coach for the milwaukee brewers and that's me mr andy haynes will join us um which mm -hmm. uh, you know me being a baseball enthusiast i We'll try to keep the interview short as we can, but I could talk baseball all day. Uh, but no, Andy, There's a lot, of, lot you could talk about, yep, though. Yep, Very great cool guy, but looking forward to that uh, next week as well. But, uh, you yep. know, it's things like that, just making connections of, of that and being able to talk to people that normally we wouldn't get to talk to and, and people interacting. And it's just fun. So become an yep. official fan. Visit the BTM shop at CheapSeatsBar.com and pick up a official hat. When you buy a hat, Sam, what do you get? Now you get this new... Free shirt. Look at that, Keith Gibson. Look at Beautiful. it. Beautiful. You get a free official God. fan T-shirt. Thanks to our great sponsors, Ford of Tuscola and Busey Bank. Uh, so you'll get a buy a hat for thirty dollars. You're saying thirty dollars for a hat? Well, yeah, we got we got to ship it. That's right. Shipping's not cheap. Not free, Keith Gibson. I mean, it's not the Pony Express. But no, we uh, of course we thank Sanford Marketing for keeping us in stock of hats too, as well. Robin and her whole team has been fantastic. It's just it really is, Sam. We've been a group effort to help us yep. grow the way we have, and and we're very very appreciative. Uh, and we're just going to keep doing it. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. <laughs> no, but uh, looking forward to next week's show. Thank you again to Justin Cook, Pigman. Thank you to you, Sam Irwin. We have another Thank wonderful you. show. Looking forward to next week. Uh, don't forget tune in this weekend. Make sure you follow the group. We'll have our bees trees. Trivia question of the week. Your chance to mm -hmm. win a free hat and a free shirt. Give one away. So mm -hmm. thanks to Greg Miller, Bees Trees, and New Dad uh, for doing that. But for my co-host, Sam Irwin, I am apparently no neck Keith Gibson. <laughs> Have a great... Jerry Krause's illegitimate son. <laughs> I don't get any love around here ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have, love you. Have, I love you. have a great week, everybody. And we'll see you next week here on the Behind the Mic Show from the Cheap Seats. Sports Bar and Grill. Bye, everybody.